Hey, race fans. Welcome to another episode of the Fueled by Estrogen post-race podcast. This week, I'm taking a look at all things Phoenix. And first and foremost, I think we need to discuss the new short track package because it wasn't as good as I think people were hoping for. Of course, watching the cars on track is a lot different to actually driving them. But if NASCAR was hoping for the drivers to be happy with the changes, they certainly fell short because during practice on Friday and qualifying on Saturday, some drivers said they didn't notice any changes at all, and other drivers were complaining that all it did was make the car more difficult to drive. So overall, the majority of drivers were dissatisfied. Truex said it was negligible at best. It felt exactly like he did in the fall. Elliott said he forgot they even did anything until they started talking about it. And Hamlin said there was nothing earth-shattering, and if they got caught behind someone, they really got caught behind. He capped it off by calling for more horsepower, yet again, and said the changes could be made within a week if they got the call. Now, to be fair, Phoenix is a truly unique track, and at a mile in length, it's definitely bigger than genuine short tracks like Martinsville and Richmond. So perhaps heaping judgment on the package just yet is a bit premature and short-sighted. Nevertheless, as everyone knows, the testing for this package took place at Phoenix during the off-season, and it yielded a simplified diffuser, it's significantly smaller and tucked up under the car with just two strakes instead of five, plus there's a smaller spoiler. And ironically, the testing hinted at today's winner. But let's be honest, the racing today didn't look a heck of a lot different at Phoenix than it did last year during the championship run. Of course, there were some good battles for position, um, with Noah Gregson seemingly involved in a lot of them. Speaking of whom, was it just me, or did the scheme on that 10 car look a lot similar to when Danica drove it with GoDaddy as the sponsor? But, you know, this time it's driven a hell of a lot better and making moves that didn't wreck people. Anyways, yeah, we saw some battles for position and passing, but just like last year, the passes took forever to complete because it looked as though the car lacked that extra oomph that everyone was hoping for. It makes me wonder, since NASCAR seems hesitant to up the horsepower, despite the call for it, maybe a better idea would be a push-to-pass system like in other series. You know, F1 has DRS, Indy has push-to-pass. Maybe there's a solution in there. Just a thought. As for today's race... There was a little deja vu from the first three races this year with a super early wreck. This one came on lap six when Derek Kraus spun and collected the Austin duo of Dylan and Sindrick. Now, for Sindrick, it ended his day and only added to his woes of a poor showing at Vegas last week, despite starting the year third in points. Uh, And his teammate Joey Logano suffered yet another disappointing and frustrating day. He was mired back in traffic for most of the day until John Hunter Nemechek hit him from behind in stage three and took him out completely. Now, unlike the last three races, the Toyotas and their new Camry showed up for the first time this year. And when they did, they dominated, leading an impressive 298 out of 312 laps. The first stages of the race looked somewhat similar with essentially the same front runners swapping positions, Toyota's dominating up front with Hamlin and Reddick and Gibbs. Uh, Now, Chase Elliott also initially looked strong among the top 10, with teammate William Byron close behind. But that didn't last, because the race took a turn under the final caution, and the complexion changed completely when those divergent pit strategies shook up the running order. Uh, Truex, along with several other drivers, stayed on the track, while I think close to two-thirds of the field chose to pit. And this placed most of those cars towards the back of the field, where three HMS drivers, Byron, Elliott, and Bowman, ended up finishing 19th, 20th, and 21st. However, Larson, who had totally struggled throughout the first two stages, including problems with a lug nut, miraculously came to life, and he ended up driving past all of his teammates. Also ironically, Kislowski, who had been struggling, was suddenly in the top 10 and finished fourth. So 
maybe not so ironically that those two cars, both the five and the six, were chosen for further inspection at the R&D center. So I guess we'll have to wait until Wednesday to see if anything comes out of that. Uh, As for Bell, it was also a big swing when the team's strategic pit decision ultimately paid off. He restarted 20th, worked his way through the field, and took the lead for a win that placed him six seconds ahead of Chris Buescher in second. Uh, I'm sure that win was bittersweet in the way, coming just one Phoenix race too late, considering that during his championship run last year, the 20 car blew a brake rotor and Bell careened into the wall and ended his day. So this is a bit of a redemption, and I'm sure a big confidence booster going forward. Uh, Despite finishing second, Chris Buescher was content with his performance, uh, acknowledging the gap between his and Bell's performance and expressing determination to improve. Ty Gibbs finished in third, a Cup Series career best for him, followed by Brad Keselowski and Ryan Blaney, who is now the points leader with a 10-point lead over Truex and Larson, who are tied for second. So Larson better hope that nothing comes out of R&D on Wednesday. Uh, In the meantime, everyone's excited for this year's Bristol Spring Race to be on the asphalt once again, so let's hope we see something good there. But the one thing you shouldn't expect to see is the short track package, despite Bristol being an actual short track. The intermediate package is instead assigned to the Bristol Race as well as Dover this year, so we'll save the judging of this simplified diffuser for a few weeks down the road.